facing is that world argument that every artist has to deal with. It's wrong, it limits your skill, it's lazy, yeah, we, we've heard it all before. But is it really as bad as people think? Now, disclaimer, personally, I think tracing can be a good tool for practice and testing out new techniques, especially if you're not used to something. But I also think that tracing from another artist and claiming that work as your own is wrong. Do not copy from another artist, copy from stuff like live action, stock photos, stuff that you technically can own, you know, not not someone else's work. That's just dumb. So when we think of tracing, our view is tainted by the modern emotions behind it. You know, we see someone who looks like they've traced something and like, well, you just stole it. That's wrong, but that's not the case. Truth is, animators from way back were tracing and reusing animation in order to cut costs. It's not cheap to animate, even today. Alright, studios reuse animation. They trace, they do all of that in order to cut the costs. So let me take you back to 1915 and Fleischer Studios. I really hope I'm pronouncing that right. So an early form of rotoscoping, which is what we're talking about, otherwise known at this point as the Fleischer process, was time-consuming and fiddly, but it worked. And it worked really well. Essentially, at that point, you had uh, two cameras, and it was just a whole thing that we don't have time to get into. But during the 1930s, it was used to great effect in many animated shorts and films of the decades. Now, I'm sure you've all seen that part of Minnie the Moocher, the Betty Boop cartoon, floating around the internet. And we know that they wrote the scope Cab Calloway's movements, but how close was it? Well, let's take a look at that. As you can see, very close. <laughs> now, once they had the basic movements, they could reuse this animation over and over again. And they did. They did it for a walrus, and they also did it for a couple of other things. Rotoscoping at this point was taking film of live action actors or musicians, tracing over it to get the timing and positioning, and then drawing the character to fit those proportions. That sounds like a heck of a lot more work than what we think of as tracing, doesn't it? By 1934, Fleischer's patent had expired, which meant that other studios can use rotoscoping for their stuff. And yeah, you know where I'm going with this, right? Disney. Disney have been caught reusing footage before. It's a time saver, so why wouldn't you do it? The Wolves in the Jungle Book and the Puppies in One and One Dalmatians is a brilliant example of this. And there's some other stuff as well with Robin Hood and Sleeping Beauty and all of that. But they also use rotoscoped animation during their earliest feature films. In 1937, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs was released, and the studio relied on rotoscoping for a lot of it. The Huntsman was pretty much entirely rotoscoped, as was a lot of the dancing and even Snow bringing up a bucket from the well. It was all to do with realism, because, as you know, drawing humans is not easy, and especially ones with mostly realistic proportions. You know, more than Betty Boop or Ant or Mickey Mouse and the stylized stuff, anyway. So they filmed the scenes in live action, traced over them, and then drew the characters to match. So when I say that Disney traces, it's not entirely clickbait, guys. <laughs> They do trace. They they use rotoscoping. This is what they do. They use techniques that are frowned upon in the artist community today by a small fraction, despite the fact that the majority of us know that tracing and referencing is how you're supposed to go about it. You're supposed to reference. You're supposed to look at something and then draw it in your own style and adapt it to fit your own stuff. Because how else are you meant to do anything? <laughs> how else is it meant to look right? You can't just pluck it out of your imagination, guys. But it's not just the past, okay? Rotoscoping isn't something that was used in the past and is never used again. It's used in so many more modern films, and so many video games, and music videos, than you'd think. Um, I've got a list from Wikipedia, so let's take a look at that and discuss a few that we might not have even noticed use rotoscoping. You can see here just how many animations used rotoscoping, and come on, Fantasia 2000, that's quite a few modern or more modern uh, animations than you'd expect, really, isn't it? You can see there, we've got 101 Dalmatians, 
out of the end quote, which I showed you earlier. We've got the Secret of Nim. Uh, what else? We've got Snow White, which, yeah, we looked at that. Um, two Snow Whites there. Uh, Flyshow did a cartoon as well. And then we go down into live action films. And uh, what you might not realise, Guardians of the Galaxy there, Rocket, Star Wars. So we've got the lightsaber effect, which you might think I'm just talking about the original trilogy, but as these pictures are going to prove, that's not actually the case. Star Wars used rotoscoping for its lightsabers throughout all of the uh, trilogies. I think even the sequels used it, I'm not entirely sure. Apart from Star Wars, there's also, like I mentioned, Guardians of the Galaxy, which used a tame raccoon, apparently, and The Lord of the Rings, which was keyframe computer animation motion capture for Gollum. Video games, honestly I don't know much about these, but you're welcome to look them up. You're welcome to tell me in the comments below, actually. Feel free. Music videos, then the last one, there's a very, very famous one. And I'm about to show it to you now. It's one that a lot of people bring up. And it's Take On Me by AHA. I can't actually show you the video. But I can 100% show you stills and behind the scenes and a gif. So that's it guys. That is my little history lesson on the history of rotoscoping in animation. Both modern and older. Um, anything you want to mention in the comments below. if you want to link me to something I've missed. If you want to point something out, feel free. Otherwise, I will see you all in the next video.